see me currently um the moment i learned that i had to give a ted talk you know especially on a day like today you know my flight got canceled um sorry i couldn't make it um but um while um your educator uh has decided to broadcast me to talk to you guys today about music and keeping it real. You know, today I want to talk to you about. Hmm, what do I want to talk to you about today? You know, I want to talk to you today about expression in everything you do. I want to talk about expression. We'll talk about weight. And we'll talk about living in the moment. So, and eventually we may cycle back around to what I just played for you. But really, in everything you do, everything you do, Somebody is watching. Whether um, you're mowing your lawn, whether you're uh, talking with your friends, whether you are even in a practice room, somebody can look through the window over there. Um, And actually, that, that kind of brings me to my next thing. So, where am I broadcasting to you today? I am in a very white-walled practice room. That was that piano. Uh, at Kansas State University. And... You know, when, when I was first told that I was going to have the opportunity to give you all a TED Talk, I was like, where do I shoot it? You know, I, and I had so many great ideas. You know, I've got, I actually know a couple stage managers at Kaufman and they actually might have been able to let me in um, before they set up for Tuba Christmas um, last weekend. Um, that ended up not working out. Uh, it would have been really cool, but didn't happen. Um, I could have um, recorded in the lovely All Faiths Chapel across the way, um, or Danforth for that matter. I could have done it um, on stage um, at McCain. Very inspirational places uh, for the young musician as yourself. Um, could have even done in my studio, but really, I didn't feel like that those places would really get the point across that I want to. Um, so, sorry, I threw you in a lot of different directions. So, right now we're in a practice room, and, you know, I don't know if anybody has ever seen... Um, a teacher or had a teacher who's gone through the motions. Um, this doesn't have to be music specific, but 
where they talk very monotone and you start to lose track of what they're saying because they're very boring and there's like no expression in their face or their voice and in their soul. <clears throat> yeah, that's not fun for anybody. Or if we've ever had a conductor that has shown up and been like, I've had a couple of those, and that's not fun either. Um, you know, so part of my job today is also to relate this back to conducting. And, you know, okay, so as young musicians, as yourselves, um, you know, you are you likely at least witness a, some sort of pattern or are taught some sort of pattern. Um, mo for me, the first one that I learned was a basic uh, two pattern. Right? And then, um, then I learned four. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and then three. Ooh, this is a different ball game, right? No. <laughs> no. Um. But what is conducting really? You know, that's that's a question I've had to ask myself multiple times over the past couple months. Um. And I, I write down a lot of thoughts. Um, one, um, one of them previously in my, in this semester, um, was a philosophy of conducting that I had to write. Um, and I firmly believe that conducting is a dance. A dance between the conductor and the musicians and the music. Um, and also that There's a dance that also occurs between just humans and events that happen in life. Um, you know, there's this constant push and pull. There's this constant um, conflict and resolution. Um, but how do we harness that? You know, how do we harness that conflict and resolution? How do we express ourselves? You know, um, Really, it, for any conductor who has never videotaped themselves while they're on a podium, shame on you. Um, but really, we can't just show up and do certain things. There are some things where we need to practice, right? You know, sometimes if we have a very challenging uh, point in a piece, we have to buckle down and there's what many would call the 10,000 hours rule where uh, you have to spend 10,000 hours on something in order to become really proficient at something. And there's a lot to be said there. Don't get me wrong. You know, I, for example, first started playing piano well, not too long after I was making syllables, you know, I, I was, I think I was four when I first sat on a piano bench. Um, but also relating back to the first thing I played for you all at the beginning, 
None of that was written down. Other than my notes for what I'm talking to you guys about, and they're very brief notes, there's really not a lot on there. You know, none of that was written down. That was all imp improv. Um, it was living in the moment. That being said, there are some things where you just have to live in the moment. There is a human element to music. And that's one of the cool things. <laughs> um, you know, there, there have been machines created to attempt at writing music. But I'm a firm believer that you need that human element. Um, we are human. You are human. You are human. I am human. We're all in this together. And it's such a cool thing when everybody can... put all of their past experiences and express it and evoke it into this beautiful thing that we call music. I know that many of the things spoken about today were a large cluster of thoughts. They've been a lot of things that have been on my head. Um, Thank you. Thank you for listening.